Hey everyone, today we are talking about here, this tissue, the epithelium. This is one of the four basic types of tissues that you can find in the human body. And if you have a question of what a tissue is, I do suggest you check out the video where I explain, uh, give you a basic understanding of what a tissue is. But now on epithelium, what I want to do on this lecture is try to give you the basic knowledge that you will need to understand what epithelium is. Now, you find epithelial cells or cells belonging to this type of tissue in or covering body surfaces, they do line body cavities, and they do form glands. So these are places where you will definitely find this type of tissue, epithelium. Now I have also examples physical of physical structures, let's say, that are comprised of epithelium. One is your skin, airways, lining of digestive tract, and urinary tract. But of course there are other examples out there that you will learn about either on this lecture or in other or future lectures that we will post here on Salmonella Place. Every histology textbook might give you a different number of functions belonging to the epithelium, to this type of tissue, but for now I selected five which I believe are the most important to understand, and I want to go briefly over each one of them. And first one is secretion, then I want to talk about selective absorption, then protection, transcellular transport, and detection of sensation. So the first function I would like to talk about is secretion. What I mean by secretion, if you have a cell, for example, my poorly designed cell here, and cells usually produce substances, and when they release these substances into the environment, this is what we describe as secretion. Epithelial cells are clearly able to provide or carry this function. And in areas such as the digestive tract, where you can clearly see a lot of epithelium lining this specific area, where there is high secretion activity, and it's clearly provided by epithelial or specialized epithelial cells. So the other function of the epithelium is selective absorption. As you know, and if we look closely at the word origin of epithelium, this is a tissue that is going to be on or upon something. So it is the tissue that is in direct contact with the outer environment, and therefore it is the tissue or these cells are going to be responsible for selecting which materials come in and which ones should stay out. So that is what, in a very quick manner, we should describe selective absorption. And epithelial cells are clearly able to do so. Again, because the epithelium is one of the tissues that is in direct contact with the external environment, it has to have a protective function. So specialized epithelium is able to protect internal tissues, especially connective, usually connective tissue, uh, which we will discuss in a different tutorial, uh, from the unstable conditions of whatever is happening in the external environment. One of the main examples of this is your skin. Your skin is your largest organ and is mainly comprised of epithelium and is clearly the main function of the skin is to provide a barrier between your internal um, tissues and the external environment. One of the great functions of the epithelium, and because this tissue has cells that are quite specialized in transcellular transport, and if I draw you one of those cells, one of those epithelial cells, they have these protrusions, let's say extensions for lack of a better word, say this is an epithelial cell, they have the nucleus, everything like a cell, but they have these extensions looking like hair. And this is actually able to transport or to carry 
materials throughout a certain distance and they these protrusions are usually able to move and they're able to carry things like mucus and digestion products throughout a necessary distance. The last function that we need to quickly go over is detection of sensation and you could think that this function would be mainly associated with nerve cells but think about, and as I mentioned several times throughout this lecture, that epithelium is usually the first layer in contact with the, the outer envir environment. Therefore, the skin is mainly comprised of epithelial cells, but also nerve cells, which will receive stimuli from the outer environment, of course, and this is why you say that epithelium is clearly involved in detection of sensation along with nerve cells. We talked about the functions of epithelium, now it is time to discuss the features or characteristics of this tissue. And one of the things every time we talk about epithelium, especially in histology class, one of the things that the professors really want you to just have it in your mind is that these cells or epithelial cells are packed and contiguous. And by contiguous means that they're arranged in a sequence and to understand how packed these cells are, it means I have like an illustration here, very simple one, where you can see that these cells have little or no intercellular material between them. So they are really close together. And this is a great difference between epithelium and connective tissue that we are going to discuss in a different tutorial or lecture because connective tissue cells have a lot of extracellular material around them. They have what we call extracellular matrix, but we're going to discuss that in that lecture. But for now, keep this in mind. Why are epithelium cells or epithelial cells closely or tightly packed together? This happens because these cells are usually joined by specialized cell-to-cell -cell junctions. And these cell-to-cell -cell junctions we should devise, and I'm going to devise an entire lecture dedicated to explaining to you what they are, but so you can have an understanding is if I have epithelial cells here, this illustration here of epithelial cells, and cell-to-cell -cell junctions are going to be ways or junctions that these membranes, the membranes of my cells, are going to be able to fuse or to connect to one another. And they're specialized in manners which they can define which materials can go through the cells and uh, between the cells and from one tissue to another, but this is going to be left for a later lecture where I'm going to go into more detail. I have a very simple illustration here and on the top I have epithelial cells resting upon my connective tissue cells. And I'm going to discuss in more detail, a little bit more detail, what connective tissue is in a different lecture. But you need to know that this is a common, common uh, trait, which is to see epithelium resting or epithelial cells resting upon connective tissue cells. But one of the very important features or characteristics is this structure that it exists between the two tissues, which is called basement membrane. And as I have here, this is what separates the epithelium from the underlying connective tissue. And it is also important to know that this is a non-cellular membrane, which means that it's not comprised of any cells and is protein polysaccharide rich membrane. You could ask how epithelium or how any tissue out there is supplied or how it gets nutrients and water. Well, epithelium is a very special case because it is called an avascular tissue, which means that it has no blood supply. 
So for that reason, you could ask, how is it nourished then? How d does it get the nutrients and water it needs? Well, usually epithelium is in contact with the, the is in direct contact with the environment or underlying connective tissue. And the the way that nutrients and water reach this tissue and the way it moves around its cells is through diffusion. So this is the way that epithelial cells find to nourish, to get the water and nutrients they need. So now it's time for the last slide of this lecture to talk about types and categories of epithelium or epithelial cells. Now, when you categorize or when you put it into groups, you have to use two, two criteria. The first one is cell shapes. And the three types of cell shapes you can find in epithelial cells is squamous, also known as flat cells. And you can see here an example of squamous cells. Another type, the second type, is cuboidal. In other words, cells are in shape of a cube, kind of like a cube, as you can see here. The third type of cell shape that you find in epithelium is columnar or in the shape of a column, a long column, as you can see here. So these are the three cell shapes that you find in epithelium. Another criteria or a category that you need to throw them in is the layers that you will find them in. You can either find them in a simple layer, which means one layer only, like you see here, simple squamous, meaning that there are one layer of flat cells, flat epithelial cells. You can also find in stratified form, which means strata, meaning different layers or in layers. And you can see here a stratified squamous Again, with stratified mean in different layers, and squamous flat cells, so different uh, layers of flat epithelial cells in this example here. And then another type of or category of epithelium is pseudostratified. And by pseudo, pseudo means fake. So fake layers or false better false layers so if you look here at my pseudo stratified columnar that's a very common epithelium type of epithelium which means that it does look like it is stratified but it's actually comprised of closely packed cells which appear to be arranged in layers but all of which are actually attached to the basement membranes. The only thing that you see here is that it is, they're all attached to the basement, I'm going to use a different color, to the basement, to the basement membrane right here. So they're all attached here, but the nuclei are in different positions. And this leads us to think that they are stratified. They are in layers, but they're not. That's why they are fake or false stratified or pseudo stratified. Now, transitional epithelium, that's another type of epithelium you can find here. And you have here this type of epithelium. And this is also comprised of multiple layers. So I'm going to write here in case you want to write down, so multiple layers. And these cells of transitional epithelium are very special cells because they're able to contract and expand. So cells able to contract and expand. And you can find this type of epithelium in your urinary bladder. 
So I will write here an example of this epithelium, urinary bladder, which cells are usually able to function like this in order to absorb or release, let's say, water.